quite there yet. However, COVID-19 could easily turn into a full-scale pandemic, something that could even actually be worse than the Spanish flu that hit uh, the whole world back in the 1910s, 1920s. A terribly worrying time. We need to be very, very careful on what happens next. And as a sub-note to that, I wish the Chinese would start to be honest. Fortunately, I have someone here in the studio who, who has actually lived in China, experienced China, and understands a little bit about the Chinese way of thinking. I say a little bit, not as a demeaning, because I don't think anyone can actually work out the full depth of how they put stuff together. Kurt, once again, welcome back to CIT. What are your initial thoughts on all of this? As far as the Chinese, the way they... It's always a front. They'll always put it front up, whether casual conversation, just meeting you, or a pandemic level. Um, things look really good in China. Sometimes they're fake. Mm -hmm. Everything's a front. Um, a bad uh, that, that's a typical communist type it is. approach. Yes, it is. It is. Um, I don't completely... I, I understand why the Chinese government wouldn't want this out. We understand that. Fire in a crowded theater, it's a bad thing. But they completely mishandled it. Well, no, no, hold on, hold on. I'm going to disagree there. Fire in a crowded theater is only bad when there is no fire. True. <laughs> okay. okay, so that's probably not a good way of looking right, at this. Right, <laughs> right. It, but minimizing it is, is better than catching everyone's hair Correct. on fire. But they lie to the world. They knew the first case was in November. Yes. It was from the World Health Organization, not December 31st. Two months, okay? Yes. It was getting out of control, not just in Wuhan, which they always claimed it was just in Rome. Now we know it's in every province. <laughs> yes. A few things we know about the virus from the World Health Organization is all bad. There's no good there. Right. And it is, as the World Health Organization claims, it's an aerosol virus. Mm -hmm. I believe, and I understand that nature doesn't make aerosol viruses. Nature makes airborne viruses, but not aerosol. That's a weaponized. I believe this came out of a biolab four. Okay. Yeah. And I know that's where we're gonna uh, uh, disagree, disagree until until we have all the facts. Right. I, I but, just if it is aerosol, I know it's man made. That's all I know. Yes. Um China's doing their best, I'm sure. And I'm not 100 million percent worried about the pandemic because we're not there yet. Even with bad numbers, we're not there yet. I'm far more worried about what's going on in China as far as manufacturing. Mm -hmm. Because like the Spanish flu, this can get out of hand really, really quick. Really quickly. But there's a big difference between that era and this era. In that era, there was no world manufacturer. There was no global economy. So one person going down didn't take everyone else down. It's a whole new era. This, this scenario could only have happened from 1970 forward. Right. So we've never been in this situation. I've been talking to my friends in China, both Chinese and foreign nationals. Um, they've sent me pictures. They're ghost town streets. It's mm -hmm. scary. I'm like, holy Jesus. So what does this mean? They're not going to work. They're not making the products. Right. 42% of all finished products come out of China. That's an astonishing number. But that's just finished products. This, this reminds me of the old saying, putting all your eggs in one, one basket. basket. <laughs> and that's exactly what all of these money-grubbing uh, companies have done. Right. Well, the 42% number is scary enough. But then when you go to the secondary and tertiary markets, partially pro produced products that then you ship to another country for final production, like many of, a, many of the stuff that comes here. Oh, absolutely. And then raw materials, both in... Uh, Imports and exports. Yes. The all, of the rare, all of the rare, rare earth materials for that your come out iPhones. Of China. Yeah. You want a new iPhone, you better hurry up. Because right now the ports are closed and new products aren't being put on the boats. What does this mean? In that worldwide pipeline, we've got six weeks, give or take a day, right. of supply. Once that dries out, we've got maybe a full week with our shipping pipeline inside the States. After this, we're going to find a brand new experiment. That's right. We've never been in this before. What does the world look like when the world's manufacturers offline? Yeah, absolutely true. And, <laughs> I mean, you know, if you think of the numbers, well, 
<laughs> it's they're astonishing. Staggering. They're, they're staggering. That's the trouble. I mean, I, I would hope that people are being very, very critical in their thinking on this. One would hope. Get some spare cash at home. Mm. Okay, whatever you can afford, put it in a drawer. You can always put it back in the bank Absolutely. if it's not touched. Okay, so an, an interest rate nowadays, you ain't losing anything. Anything, right. <laughs> you know, let's be honest about that. Of course not. No, uh, the, the Chinese government will prop up the, will prop up the, Shanghai, the uh, Shanghai stock market, the SSE, yeah. for as long as they can, I'm sure of it. Them not having the world reserve currency, they can't continue it forever like we uh -huh. do. But once the pipeline dries up, then it's going to start affecting markets around the world. I can see a total shutdown of all stock exchanges. And I don't know what the world looks like after that. I don't know. I mean, that's I just know. blackness. No. That's darkness. Didn't they do something similar to that after 9-11? Uh, uh, three-day shutdown, correct. But that was, was just a New York stock exchange. But that was just a New York one. Okay. Yeah. The, okay. We, we, this is uncharted waters. Uncharted. And even if China gets back online, think of a machine with the cogs and the teeth and the wheel. Yeah. Every day they're offline, it's chipping off a tooth. That's right. How many teeth can go before the for the cycle doesn't start back up again? I, I wonder how many companies are actually sitting back and thinking, you know what? We probably made a bit of a mistake here. We need to diversify all of our manufacturing. Look at that. I wonder how many. <laughs> a few, I'm sure, but joke's on them. They don't own their factories. That's correct. You know, I, I always say this as a side note, but the American oligarchs that bought off our political system to ship our jobs and our technology overseas that we built gave away ownership yes for slave labor yes wow that's a powerful statement however and, uh, and, and it's also something that trump doesn't understand oh, of course not <laughs> he seems to think that the chinese stole the the, the, the rights whereas they didn't these we companies gave, gave them <laughs> the rights of course well he's a con man he'll use the fear Yes. They took something from us. You're right. They do have something we had, but it wasn't taken. It was given. Yes. It's the classic con. And his followers just march along. However, back to the virus, we've, we've never seen this before. It's going to be very interesting uh, uh, to see what happens and very terrifying. Mm -hmm. I completely agree with you, though. Get 500, get 1,000, get 2,000 in cash. Yeah. Stick it in the house. If you got it, a few weeks of food. Sadly, remember, a majority of Americans have got about <laughs> two or three hundred in the bank. A majority of yes. Americans. Yes. I mean. I mean, it's it's difficult. So, they don't have the spare cash to put in the drawers. They don't have the money to buy a couple food. of weeks of food <laughs> to store away. Right. I mean, and that's a majority of Americans. It's it's getting very very scary. And when there's a run on the grocery stores, if this all falls oh, apart, right. mm -hmm. we got three days. Yeah, three days of food supply, and we're into anarchy. Right. So we're going to see what happens with what was the name? Of, I forgot the the shortened name. Oh, COVID nineteen. COVID nineteen. We're we're going to see what happens here. But like I said, we we've never been here before. No, no, not 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 like we are, and it's very scary. Of course. I'm not hearing people commenting about how badly China actually handled mm. this, this whole series of events, starting from when the doctor raised the concern in a private chat room okay. to other physicians, and he then gets visited by the police. Look at that. And mm -hmm. told to shut up. Mm -hmm. And that gave a four to six week period of infection. For the thing to blossom. What's the name of the town again where it started? Wuhan. Wuhan. Tell me a little bit about Wuhan. Have you ever been there? I've never been there, but I had a friend that taught there when I first got there. Uh, it's five to eight million people, about the same size of Deliang. It's a medium industrial sized city. It's not anything so it special. So it is an industrial city. They're all industrial cities in China. Oh, that's true. That's true. Sorry. <laughs> but, so it's an industrial city. So that means that people were traveling in and out oh, yes. from all over the world visiting companies that are oh, based yes. there. Which is why it spread so quickly once it got outside right. of China. Yeah. So China stopping, instead of doing a proper investigation of what this doctor was reporting. Right. If they hadn't swept it under the rug, which is what they tried to do, mm -hmm. they could have things not. could have been things could have been a lot different. Right. 
I don't understand why they would make the decision of just silence him, but don't do anything about it. I'm not quite understanding. I'm not that understanding that at all, because, I mean, you'd have thought that they, someone somewhere, well, mind you, this was all done by the local, the local, the local party, place. not Beijing. Right. And I think when Beijing got involved, from everything that I've read, they started to get very proactive very quickly. Because I know a lot of heads are rolled. Oh, they would have to be. I would say, uh, I'd say one thing. My friend Whiskey, mm -hmm. who is connected very yes. well to the Chinese government, he wouldn't talk to me about this on the phone. Okay, that makes sense. You know, I think that's maybe how bad it is. Uh, the Chinese government did report two days ago 100 people a day are dying. Yes. I know that doesn't sound like a big number, especially for 1.3 billion people. That's right. But because of one thing. Yes. You know, uh, we're going to have to wait and monitor this. I wish I had answers. All I have is much more questions. I, know. I mean, it's a what, a seven to eight day incubation period? That's one of the things that make it so deadly. The flu is a half day to two days to where right. you're contagious before you start showing symptoms. This is seven days. Think of how many people you reach in seven days. We got lucky that it's the winter, not too many summer festivals. Right. But soon it'll be spring if this thing's still around. It could get a boost jump that way. That way. I guess. Uh, it's all questions, Mark Nigel. We don't know exactly what this is. And we, well, we know what it is. We don't know exactly what it'll do. So we just need to get the information right. out there, buy food, get some cash, right. and let's hope for the best. <laughs> I see that uh, places like uh, Moscow, I mean, seven or eight days ago, Moscow's, a couple of the, uh, the news channels there were, were spouting the fact that they thought it was an American invented virus that yeah. had been planted in China. This was then picked up by the Middle East, where they then mm -hmm. spouted exactly the same story. No surprise there. I give it to three days before and, Trump starts repeating yeah. it. And the funny thing is, I've, I've just finished reading a book called The Tenth Cycle. I won't go into the book. Okay. <laughs> that actually has this, as their, this whole thing here, as their base storyline that runs a through. Pandemic. Pandemic. And we have a furious president. And, and how mm -hmm. people were blaming America when it wasn't. It was a naturally occurring... Uh, virus that escaped, mm -hmm. basically. It wasn't created, it was natural. And Mother is completely capable of that. With um, global climate change, we're going to have brand new creepy crawlies that we have never seen we before. We have never seen before. This one's not one of them, but that can happen. Right, so, the good news is, providing we both don't drop dead, <laughs> we will probably be back next weekend to do some more shows. What do you think, mate? I hope so. Kurt, once again, Always thank you very here. much for coming into CIT. Thank you. It's a pleasure having you.